patch for rock, paper, scissors. Definitely do. Okay. So it looks like you get to see uh, Spoink Man once again going against uh, Kibo. Okay. Kibo, another Greninja. You actually see a lot of Greninjas. Yeah, Greninja uh, action. Yeah, Greninja action is uh, never anything to comp uh, complain about. Um, you know, they're kind of like a dying breed, and I'm really happy that 2DG did the uh, Greninja Saga, man. It shines some light on that character. So that character definitely had his time, like, right when Smash 4 first started, yeah. and then he kind of fizzled, but now he's back. Oh, yeah, so he's definitely hit with the Nerve Hammer. Uh, then they uh, kind of buffed him a little bit again in some later patches. It was like, all right, maybe we were kind of too hard on you, Greninja. Right. It's like Spoink Man's finally, uh, finally chipping away some damage there. Ooh. Nice, gets the nair right into uh, the forward air there. Oh, he's going to punish the Shadow Sneak. Good job getting in. Seeing so him 94 damage, uh, Marth is always a very scary character, especially with Raid dealing with that tipper. As we saw Spoink Man to do to win his last match, he actually hit somebody with the reverse hitbox of the tipper. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, right, oh I like oh, did he just auto cancel the uh auto cancel the, the nair and then you know got two jabs. That was really good. Boxing Greninja up close. That's something Greninja really isn't quite used to. Oh that was a good read. Under saying that he was probably gonna shadow sneak out of the dancing blade. That was really good. We saw a trump there. Didn't get anything off of it, but uh definitely letting Kibo know that you cannot grab this ledge for free. This is a rough spot for uh, Mark to be in because the fact that a lot of his uh, kill confirms come out of delayed combos gives Kibo the opportunity to, you know, shadow sneak out of a lot of those combos. So, yeah, he's really going to have to stay on the uh, up and up about that. Ooh, okay, right now Kibo uh, making sure to stay on the stay in shield while on that platform was very smart, but actually died from the up throw there. Uh, kind of surprising. Yes, sir. And despite the strong start that Kibo had, it's, it is Spoink Man who spills first blood. Uh, what we've seen from these Greninja players today is that uh, they have the ability to rack up tons and tons of damage, but when it comes to finally getting that kill, is uh, where we see the struggle. That's kind of the life of Greninja. That's the life you pick when you play this character. Oh, yes. If you can't get those down tilts, if you can't get those nares, I mean, you just have to get stuff off of pure reading. There you go. Down air. Same Greninja at a funky angle. Ooh, and he waited that one out. Oh, wow. Kibo not able to make it back to the stage. Spoint man. Oh, man. That's what you call wait. Patience. He was, he was waiting to the end of time. To get that, uh, to get that opportunity there, but that forward air definitely sealed the deal. Took that jump and forced him to uh, use Hydro Pump back to stage, but man, he was just way too far away. All right. All right. So, do you expect to see a, a Greninja game number two from this gentleman? Possibly. Uh, you know, he played pretty well that last match. He started off good, just fizzled towards the end. Oh wow, actually not. I think we're going Bowser. Did I just hear Bowser? Yeah, we're definitely going Bowser. Okay, we're going Bowser. Maybe some uh, inspiration from uh, ooh, from UGC. Uh, I mean, after that tournament, you just saw Bowser's pop up everywhere. Absolutely. People realizing that this is a character when neutral three times. Uh, you have the ability to take a stock. Uh, very, ooh, very fundamentally based. Uh, get those pivot grabs. Oh, I like it. You know, actually, Bowser should have been a character that people should have picked a long time ago. Uh, even, you know, before UGC, like Dyer, uh, the commentator Dyer oh, on yeah, fire, Dyer. man, he beat Nairo, I think, once or twice playing Bowser. So, you know, it's definitely doable. Just got to want it. Okay. Dancing Blade tacking off some quick percentage here. Not going to be able to shout sneak out of that. Good job. Dancing Blade going on there. Forward smash not on point there. It's going to end up with him getting grabbed. Grab here. Forward air that time. Corner. Yes. Very patient, as you see. Very uh, a night and day switch. There, you play a character like Greninja one match where you know you're moving around and jumping all the time. Then you're playing this very stationary, this very uh, wall, uh, you know, light character. So, oh yeah, it's, just, it's definitely different. His, pan his hands probably got tired from playing Greninja. He <laughs> just wanted to chill. I'm like man, let me rest up. All right. Ooh, okay. With the jumping dancing blade here. Yeah, that gets that uh, up to a great. Ooh, this could be a dead Marth. Up air is going to kill. Ooh, all right, okay. 
I see him. Spike oh, expecting is, a roll. Yeah, Spike Man displaying a little patience of his own. Never too late to start that up in uh, any point of the match. Oh, nice. Spike Man getting a little bit further away from the stage, but he's able to make it back. Ooh, all right. A down there right after. Oh, bad read there, too. I think that was supposed to be uh, Pivot Grab. Okay, nice. Giving Spike Man a second chance at life. Okay, Kibo uh, losing that first stock there. Uh, only attacking on 20 damage on Tamaris. It's definitely very close right now. Ooh, ridiculously close. Basically, he's going to punish that grounded up special. Thanks, man. Okay, oh, nice. Okay, gets the pivot forward tilt. Right now, man, Kibo being really relentless here. He's trying to see a little bit more uh, aggression. Before, you know, he was just kind of standing around and really waiting for Splinkman to throw something punishable, but not this time. Oh, he, Ooh, just he just tried to walk up and grab him. He just tried to tiptoe out of that situation. Ooh, Dancing Blade once again getting Bowser off the stage. Splinkman goes uh, down there for the spike. You know, every time he goes for Dare and he misses. Yeah, he gets punished. He gets punished. And it's not right away. It gets punished because now, you know, the stage positioning has completely changed and shifted out of your favor. Like, the minute that happened, he tried to jump back on stage, got grabbed, and that was it. Dealing with uh, Bowser's grab, definitely not the easiest thing in the world. That pivot grab, uh, I mean, might, might as well give that man a tether. Definitely. Three, two, one, go! All right, moving right into game number three here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, uh, this is it. Comes down to the nitty-gritty. All right, game number three is going to be fought here on Battlefield, and I actually really like this stage selection. Uh, Spoink Man going to Battlefield, uh, realizing that last match that he did lose both of his stocks to Koopas. Uh, Battlefield is going to give him uh, a 10%, a little shield uh, from dying from that. So uh, great thinking. He has some longevity here, so let's see how much he can utilize that. I mean, as you see, oh my, that pivot grab. Look how far away he was. Okay, looking for another grab there. Oh, Spoink uh, missing a, a key opportunity to get some uh, much needed damage or even a stock right there. He's right out. Gets the dancing blade right now. He's off stage. And again, another situation Ooh. where he tries to go off and get him. Luckily, not getting punished that time. Kilo not able to use that stage control to his advantage. Uh oh, he's a sitting duck out there. Oh my! Oh, oh no! No. Okay, so sadly, first of all, that spike should have should have killed him. But uh, with the way that our spike works in this game, it did not kill. And then he just didn't make it back to the stage when in the 40 percentile. Oh, that's regrab. Try to punish it with the dragon killer. Right, so we're gonna need. Oh, okay. So somehow he fell out of that up smash. I don't understand Mark's up smash. I don't understand how he fell out of that. I don't understand how he backed the people in. It just, it's a very difficult move to deal with, especially when you're a big guy like Kibo, but I know he's counting his blessings. Now with Max style raise, let's see if he can put a little bit of uh, icing on this cape. Punish him there. Bowser sitting at 199 damage. Bowser is definitely going to be able to uh, put Mars in some sticky situations uh, with that damage and the knockback that he's able to do. But also needs to be very careful because almost anything is going to kill from Mars at this point in time. We haven't seen a lot of Bowser bomb attempts either. We can't forget about that. Okay. It's the up throw. That is going to be enough to do it. Of all moves, the up throw. All right. 66%. Uh, six, six Ooh, and that oh, pivot did he just? Then he goes for flamethrower afterwards. Not too sure uh, what the idea was there. Ooh, okay. Keeping Bowser off stage. Uh, he is a big body, so he will have an issue getting back onto the stage. And we have Spoink Man exploiting that right there. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Ooh, he's going to miss it. You know, and despite him being off the mark a lot of times with the off-stage uh, shenanigans, oh, no. uh, it's still a buying effort, and it still sends a message. But, oh, my goodness, this message might get sent here. Yeah, that's and he's do still it. going to die from the up air. Uh, Kibo making it out of pool using Bowser, and it was uh, pretty sad to see that happen to Spoink Man there when uh, it looked like he was uh, very much in control. He did not get the spike box 